that topic. So, um, so first of all, thank you very much, Elizabeth and uh, Lorenzo, for organising this, um, particularly in light of the um, climate. Um, so today we're going to just uh, today I want to just go over with you two uh, statistical uh, software packages. Just <laughs> Um, this will be a kind of introduction to these two software. I'm not in any way an expert uh, statistician or an expert user of Jasper Geometry, uh, but they're just a way to introduce you to easy, user-friendly ways to analyze your data and do routine analysis. There is somebody, I think, that... Um, I feel like there's somebody who's not muted. Um, there's a bit of feedback. It's really way to... Okay, okay, it's gone now. Um, right, great. Uh, so anyway, so with you kind of giving you the background, what the problem is we have with SPSS and R, um, introduce you to Jasper and Jamovi, do a few worked examples and different things they can do. Um, so everybody, the majority of people will, will be familiar with SPSS and SPSS is, is popular for, for good reason. Uh, it's not because it was one of the first statistical packages that particularly in the social sciences uh, that, that was used. It, it's got a lot of functions and it, it does perform, uh, you know, a, a very good job uh, at doing um, quite a broad range of things. But it has um, fostered a few bad habits and it's also, it, it's not the most uh, efficient and um, sort of speedy way to, to work. So it can be quite buggy, it can crash. It can be very slow, it can be quite awkward. So when you run an analysis, you have a separate output window and you have to kind of um, uh, juggle between the analysis you want to run and the output from it. And it's pricey too, so it doesn't come free. Most people will have access to it through an institutional login, but as people have probably noticed transitioning from their office to remote, you need to get a license. And this sometimes doesn't work when you're off campus. So the, there are other alternatives to JASP, uh, sorry, to SPSS, um, and obviously R comes to mind. And R is 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 fantastic. So you can pretty much do anything that you like in R, um, but it does come with a steep learning curve. It can be intimidating. It can be overkill if you just want to find the mean or you want to do a t-test. Uh, and it can be quite time consuming as well. So it's not the most quick and speedy way to do routine analyses. Um, so there's pluses and minus to both. Obviously there's far more pluses to R, but it's not all, or it's not a one size fits all. So is there, a, is there a third way? Can you run simple analyses in a free and user friendly fashion? Can you work uh, reproducibly? So that's one thing I didn't mention with R. R is very good, of course, for open research. Um, uh, you can, um, uh, circulate all of your script and code in a way that can be reproduced quite easily and obviously you can collaborate but it comes with all of the, the, the downsides that I mentioned. So is there a way that you can sort of take the good things from both in and, and sort of put them in one package and I think you can uh, to a large extent with JASP and, and Jamovi so both JASP and Jamovi are open source, uh, they're user friendly, they kind of, um, their overlay, so what they look like uh, is sort of familiar to people that use SPSS, but unlike SPSS, they run on R code, um, which is obviously handy, which I will uh, uh, go over with you, with you later why that's handy. And I would recommend you, that you use both, so you should have both uh, at your disposal uh, because they they have pluses and minuses each of them and there's no harm in having both. Um, so I'll just start with JASP. 
So JASP was uh, was designed with sort of Bayesians in mind. So uh, it, they designed it so you could run um, a, a suite of Bayesian analyses. And EJ, uh, who I believe is going to give a talk for the Rotterdam riots, uh, although it was postponed, um, he's obviously a, a very strong advocate of using JASP to, to conduct um, uh, Bayesian analysis. Um, just as an FYI, I have put hyperlinks uh, in the text, so you can just quickly go to the, the references that I'm referring to. So if we go to the download uh, link in the slides, uh, you can find the different ways to download. You can use it on Windows and Mac. Um, you have a bunch of uh, resources as well. Uh, you have lots of support. Um, pretty much anything that you need. It's also used quite widely for teaching. Uh, there are lots of different teaching resources as well, um, and it's used across the, the globe. Um, a couple of things I'll just uh, point out to you. There's the How To JASP, which is a qu a quite a nice way to... So JASP is, is not just for people who want to use JASP. It's also a, quite a handy website for people who just want to get introduced to different statistical analyses. So it's really nice teaching tools. And they've collated a bunch of resources here for different types of frequentist analyses that most of you will be familiar with. But also there's Bayesian analyses as well. Um, and finally, there are uh, a, a, a bunch of materials here. So there is this uh, free JASP guide for students. And this is a really nice introduction to the nuts and bolts of um, different statistical analyses and how you can carry them out in JASP as well. So that's that's JASP in in terms of what useful material are there. So I'm just going to go through a few um, worked examples with you. Um, so. Uh, I'm just going to go through how you can load the data, uh, edit the data, uh, different uh, analyses, descriptive statistics, and just show you, uh, well, point to different Bayes. I won't go into the Bayesian stuff because um, A, I'm not that confident with it, and B, EJ will do a much better job than I uh, can do. So I'm just going to exit uh, uh, this now and open up uh, JASP. Um, right, so this is this is JASP, um, and let's just start by loading data. So one of the great things uh, with JASP, I'm just going to find the data file, is that it can read uh, different types of data. So say if you're working with a team that uses SPSS, it can read an SPSS file straight away. So this is just a data file which has um, gender, so boys and girls, height uh, in centimetres and age, um, which is, I believe, 10 to 18. This is just a made up data set I made up the other day, uh, just to demonstrate that you, you can easily read uh, SPSS files without any kind of file conversion. Um, you can also read uh, CSV as well and, and whoops yeah uh, straight away so identical data set here gender height and age um, the great thing about if I just um, so I don't get confused I'm just going to close the SPSS version so this is the um, the CSV file so the great thing with JASP is um, is that you, you can edit the data um, without having to, so if you were working with SPSS, you don't have to go into SPSS and uh, uh, change any data that you want to change, save it and then go back and upload it to JASP. You can do it in, in, in sort of in sync. So all you do is you double click on one of the cells, it doesn't matter which, and that will open up the underlying file. And in this case, it's the SPSS. So this is the SPSS file that we that we have open. And so if you want to change the age, you notice that this is the wrong age for this participant. So they're actually 12 years old. Uh, you save. 
And then for this, you can just press Control Y. And then there you go. You can see that it's updated already. So it's a really nice way to interface between the, the raw data and your JASP file. So um, I can close this. Also, what's nice about it is that you can save it uh, on your computer or you can save it to the OSF. So if you're working in a, in a, a, a collaborative team that use OSF, um, so I'll just log on here. I'll uh, just quickly find the folder I created on the OSF. Um, so it's this one. Um, oh, yes, sorry. I've gone on the wrong thing. So, yes. Uh, so, yeah, if I wanted to save as, right, sorry, I was clicking on open there, but it's the same thing. You you log into the OSF and you follow the, the, the route to the folder. And then if I wanted to save here, I just press save. And I'll just wait for it to make its mind up. OK, so if I go into my OSF page, and identify the, the um, folder again. There it is. OK, so it wasn't there before, but it's there now. So you can upload that and people can access it straight away. Just as a, an FYI, for those, I, I assume that most people will know what the OSF is, but it's the, if for those who don't, it's just the Open Science Framework. Um, it was designed by um, uh, Brian Nozick and his team, and it's it's mainly a, a, a sort of multi-purpose uh, site that allows you to build projects, coordinate teams, upload data, manuscripts, and so on. It's a very multi-purpose thing with lots of resources as well. So I do highly encourage you to um, to use it. Um, we will try to get somebody from the OSF team to give a kind of tutorial on it. So just watch that, watch that space for that. Um, but while I'm here, you can also find all of the the rights, previous rights talks as well on our on our OSF, and I can share the link with you uh, at the end of the talk. So anyway, so back to uh, to Jasp. Um, so that's the kind of um, the basics to. Uh, JASP. Um, what I will just quickly do now is um, uh, load up a new data file and just show you different things that we can do with it. Uh, but what I just need to do first of all is um, just quickly install that. So, so um, Let's say your supervisor wants you to perform a particular analysis that you're not familiar with. Um, it's nothing particularly complicated, but you just not you don't you just don't know um, how to quite run it and and what things that you should do when you do uh, come to analyze your data in that way. The OS the JASP has a, an internal data library um, with lots of different data sets, and they've been sort of um, categorized into the different kinds of statistics that you can run. And these are the different statistics that JASPs, a JASP can run. So I just want to do a simple t-test. And I'm going to do this directed reading activities. And what you can see here is the, is the data again. So you have the participant ID, the group. So this group just did uh, different types of uh, reading intervention. And this is their directed reading performance. So just to navigate around JASP for you, uh, we have different uh, descriptive statistics that we can do. We can do t-tests and we have the Bayesian equivalent uh, for ANOVA2, uh, regression, so frequencies, so this is your chi-square stuff, and also factor analysis. You can do other stuff as well, so meta-analyses, uh, it's quite limited function though. Uh, you can do network, structural equation modeling, and summary statistics. Summary statistics is uh, for cases where you um, 
are unable to get the raw data from uh, published uh, papers. So you can just uh, extract what was reported in the manuscript and put them into the summary statistics as well. And this is useful for the, the, for the Bayesians in the audience as well. Um, so let's just um, get into it. So let's say uh, we just do the routine thing that most of us do, which is first we, well, we want to eyeball the data. So we can go on descriptive statistics and what we uh, are given uh, is the sort of analysis uh, panel and also the output. So already you can see this is much better than what SPSS gives you. It's an immediate interface between what you put in and what you get out. So our variables are uh, the DRP, the directed reading performance, and you can notice here that it uploads straight away. And we have the group, so the treatment versus um, non-treatment or control. And you can see the usual run of the mill statistics already given as a default. Um, we might want to look at the distribution. So we look at the plots and distribution and we're given it straight away. And just to help our eyes, we might want to look at whether it's normally distributed with that line there. If you want to do something more sophisticated, you might want to do, say, a violin plot, uh, which is uh, quite popular now. So you would click on box plots, just exclude that and select violin. Whoops, yeah, the violin plot. You can also have them coloured. And you can have jitter elements as well to look at your data points. So for those who don't know what a violin plot is, it's just a nice way to show the density in relation to the spread of the data. So you can see here, or here, probably is a best good example, there's quite a, a, a cluster of closely, um, uh, um, where there's a high density of data uh, at around 60. But here you can see that there's a much a bigger spread of uh, the data with a high cluster of between 40 and 60, but there's also a few um, outliers too. And this is just as a sanity check, you can see here where the, the mean is around 41 to 51 and the standard deviation is, is 17 and 11. So it's sort of reflected here as well. So there's quite a broad standard deviation here, whereas not with respect to the treatment group. So we've looked at the data, which is what we all should do. Uh, and say we want to just keep that um, so we can refer back to it. You just click OK. And now we want to do a t-test. We want to see if there's any statistical difference between the two groups. No, so it's a different, it's a between subjects design. So we run an independent samples t-test. And we get a new analysis window. Um, our dependent variable is the directed reading performance and we grouping variable is the group. So you can see here the uh, the usual things that we would see, so the T uh, statistic, the de degrees of freedom and the p-value. One thing that uh, JASP does that it's quite difficult to do, you have to go through a few hoops to get it, is the effect size in Cohen's D. Uh, in, uh, so you don't get this with SPSS, but it's immediately available to you in JASP and with the um, confidence interval as well. We might want to do some normality uh, and equivalence variance, uh, equality of variance checks. And it gives you quite nice annotations underneath uh, so you to help you interpret your your graph, uh, your 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 output. Um, I was just reading a, a blog post by, by Daniel Larkins who says that by default use the Welsh uh, t-test instead of the student. And normally you would do maybe uh, Levine's test, but these can be underpowered. So to check for equality of variance and Welsh is very good for dealing with uh, when equality of variance is not assumed. But Daniel recommends that you just use Welsh's test as a as a default and you have it already available in JASP. So you might as well use it and you compare it against a student. In our case, you might want to use it because you can note, you notice here, as I said before, the standard deviation does differ between the two groups. So you have that, that sort of basic stuff, t-test, and it's all done for you straight away, and you've done it in a matter of, of minutes, if not seconds. It's very quick and easy to do. With SPSS, it would be far more clunky, and with R, it would be clunky too. 
the great thing about JASP is that you can do, uh, you can uh, put uh, notes or annotations directly onto your output. So if you're working, if you're collaborating with other people, or say if you are a postdoc who is trying to uh, break in a PhD student, you might want to save time by pre-preparing the kind of analysis that you've already carried out that's highly annotated. So you could, uh, you just add a note here. So firstly, I, um, I board the data. I noticed uh, differences in variance between groups. Uh, and then you can say here, um, I carried out, so, so lastly, um, I carried out uh, a t-test uh, um, both student and Walsh. Okay, so uh, you can do that and you can save the file then. So we could say practice DRP. Oops. And then we can, whoops, whoopsie daisy. Oh, so we can close it. Uh, and then open up the JASP and we can open up our um, folder and it's all there with all the annotations ready for us to go. So that could be passed on to any anyone in your team as a, as a collaborative exercise or it could just be to teach your students how to run different analyses and so on. The great thing about this is um, you can copy and paste these uh, this output into Word. So let's say you wanted to uh, copy these figures. So you just select and you click copy and you can copy and paste here. So it just has to confirm. So they're already there ready for you to go. The, with the figures. Um, you probably obviously need to render them a bit better, but they're pretty much good to go. Or if you prefer, you can um, you can save them as different types of images. I know that uh, unusually you can have a TIFF file, uh, but you can save them as all different kinds of images. The other great thing about, the, um, about JASP is that you can copy and paste the tables Well, um, <clears throat> and these are already in APA format, so you're good to go. So obviously with, with the SPSS, you need to reformat them, and that's obviously a very laborious exercise. So already, hopefully you can see that JASP is quite a quick and easy way to analyze your data. Um, I think that... Uh, Covers. Oh yes, before I move on to Jamovi, um, I mentioned before that there are different um, data sets within the library um, and that they, they are data sets that can be uh, particularly amenable to the different types of statistics that you can do in, in JASP. Um, what's great about these data sets is that they come pre annotated. So let's take the example that I've just had, which is the directed reading activities, and you'll notice that there are two options here. I selected this one, which is just the raw data, but you can have this JASP file, which um, has been annotated, and it gives you details about the different variables and the different statistics that you can run and how to interpret the data as well. Or you could uh, go on a different data file, say if you wanted to do something more fancy, 
say maybe a network analysis and there's this data set that's here which is responsive from 2800 participants on the big five inventory so we can open this and this is just a walkthrough of a network analysis so you go through this and it can show you how to visualize the the analysis as well and you can play around with it of course to tailor it to your liking so there is one option which is uh, in the graphical options you can make it so that it's for colorblind uh, people as well it changes it like this Hopefully it will work. Oops. Yeah. Whoops. It has a... Okay. So you can change it, and it and it just goes through different the different component parts of a network analysis. There's also other ones as well. I mean, I won't go keep labouring the point, but if you are unfamiliar with particular analyses, I think this would be a nice place to start, just to get the kind of bear, your bearings of what you would be expected to carry out as the kind of basics to before running the the analysis and the kind of sanity checks that you have to do there also i should say that these these data sets have been provided by notable people so uh, ej one being one andy field i think most of you will know who andy field is as well so that's that's uh jasp um yeah so i won't go any more into detail um is there anything else um no okay um okay so i'll close this um i'll just quickly check in if there's any um, anything in the chat okay Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, right. I'll I'll answer the questions at the end. Is probably best. All right. So I'll close this. Um, for the love of God. Okay. Well, that's just going to stay. Okay. So Jamobi now. Um, let's Jamobi. So, so Jamovi, uh, Jamovi was, um, was created from uh, the people that made Jasp also made uh, Jamovi, and what they kind of ideally wanted to have more freedom in what you can do in the um, in the sort of workspace of, of Jasp in a way. So even though JASP does run on R code, it's very difficult to extract the, the R code underneath it and to play around with it and modify it um, and build kind of different analyses uh, that you can run in that kind of nice user friendly environment. So I'll just again signpost a few things for you. So this is where you can download it. They do have like the solid version, which is what they've stress tested, and then the new one with less features as well. I'm just using the solid version just to be uh, confident that it's going to be OK. Uh, then there's the user guide, which is gives you all kinds of need to know information that will orient you when when using uh, Jamovi as well. And there's also the blog. The blog is really good. You get guest blogs uh, as well. And most of the content of these slides have just been shamelessly copied and pasted from uh, the different uh, blog posts. Uh, I have put in links in each slide, which uh, will direct you directly to the, the, the blog post that I use. So I'm just going to go through uh, Jamovi and the kind of three things that you can do. And if we have time, maybe a fourth as well. Um, but what I want to focus on is a kind of interface between uh, the user friendly environment of Jamovi and the scary environment of, of R and how you can work in a team that uses R and even though you might not be confident with it. So, um, um, 
So how is best to do this? So let me start by uh, just going through Jamovi. So already you can see that it looks very familiar to uh, JASP. Uh, there's slightly different labels, but in all intents and purposes, it's pretty much the same software. There's obviously um, not the Bayesian functions that we saw before, um, the, uh, but they're, they're all there. These are the default uh, options. You'll notice that there are more options here. And this is why um, Jamovi is really good, because it's more of a kind of community based uh, platform where people can design their own Jamovi package, if you like, and upload it for other people to use. And these are kind of stripped back um, R packages uh, that, that aren't quite as scary as, as, as if you were to just use them in R. And the way that you get them is uh, if you click on the plus sign and you have modules and uh, you can open your Jamovi library and you can install um, the different modules that are there. So already you've got the different Bayesian methods. So if you wanted to work in Jamovi only and uh, also have the JASP um, Bayesian methods, you can do it there. And these are created by the JASP team as well. Uh, different R data sets um, that you can use. So you can see this. The other great thing is that anybody can contribute and they are, of course, uh, stress tested as well. Uh, you can see here Daniel Arkins has, uh, has contributed his um, uh, two one-sided tests or equivalence testing as well. So the great way to, so these are constantly changing and uh, so it's important to just uh, keep, keep tabs on them or if you want to create your own. So I'm going to work with uh, the uh, data set uh, that I have, which is the uh, tooth growth. So it's a .csv file. And this is just looking at uh, the length of guinea pig teeth uh, with different supplements, so VC or OJ, and different doses of that supplement. So let's say we wanted to run an ANOVA, so we would uh, we'd run the ANOVA, and we can run a uh, the dependent variable is length, and we also have the factors, the supplement, and um, dose. So this is your basic ANOVA and again it looks very much like JASP, just a straightaway interface. Now you might want to, uh, so the, that, that's sort of the, if you wanted to stay in, in Jamovi, um, but you might want to move to R, you might want to learn how to use R, you might want to just get to grips with its basic functions, or you might want to collaborate with somebody who's more used to using R. And I just want to go through with you a few steps of how you might want to do that or how you can do that. So first of all, with, um, with Jamalbury, because it runs on R, and, and unlike just because you can access the R code, what you do is you go onto the, the three dots in the corner and you look for syntax mode. And then that will allow you to see the, the R code there. So what you can do is you can copy this and you can open an R uh, window. Which So I've already done this um, before the talk today. And what I've done here is uh, that's the analysis that I've just run. And what I have done before uh, running that analysis, I've installed the JMV package and I've uploaded it to the library, and I've also um, created a new data set of the tooth growth, um, which is what I've got running in Jamovi at the moment. So if I, um, I think I've already got them installed, yeah. So these are all ready, so let me just load my data, and let me just run the, uh, the ANOVA. So this, um, so there's two things here. The first thing is what you've just done is you've reproduced what you've done in, in Jamovi in R. So that's number one, which is you can allow other people can check that you've carried out your, your data analysis properly. 
The other thing is, is that you have run an ANOVA in R in a very simple, stripped down um, way. So when you run an ANOVA in R, you usually have to have a, a fairly, relatively complicated formula uh, in order to carry it out. But with Jamobi, the JMV package, you can just do a very quick, um, kind of almost point and click in a way, uh, approach to it. And you can also build on your code. So this is the basic stuff, but you can also do lots of other things too. So I'm just going to copy, uh, just going to run this code. So let me just extend this window. So you can see here that it's run a bunch of assumption checks, uh, homogeneity, normality in a QQ plot. So here, what you would, what I'm trying to get across to you is if you wanted to play around with the different functions of the JMV package in R, you can do that, or you can just um, duplicate what you have done here in your Jamovi um, uh, window. So you can do uh, homology test, QQ plot, uh, you can do post hoc tests, Cohen's D, um, with different post hoc and stuff. And you can see it's building your R code, which you can then copy and paste, which I've done here already, but you can copy and paste into the R window. And somebody who's more comfortable in using R can check this, run it, and play around with it as, as in how they please. So that's how you can get from Jamovi into R by just going on the syntax mode and then copy and paste the syntax into this. But in order for R to read it, you need to have the, the JMV file connected. So hopefully that um, sort of makes sense. There are different reasons why you want to do so the re one of the reasons why the JMV package was, was created was that it just brings loads of different routine um, packet. Um, well, there's, to run routine analyses, you often need, very, uh, in R, you need several packages. Uh, but the JMV package brings all of these different statistical packages into one package. And you can use the package for descriptives, t-tests, all of these different uh, analyses that are routine and for which in R you need a lot of different uh, add-on packages. The logistic regression and log linear regression, these two packages are, um, at, the, at the time the blog, this blog here was written, um, these packages were in development, so I'm not really sure whether they can actually be run in the JMV package. Uh, in the slides, I do go through with you what different parts mean. So if any of you didn't get that, uh, you can go through those slides in a more uh, pedestrian way so you understand what I'm doing. So um, in uh, what the, the other great thing with R is that uh, with Jamovi is that not only can you go from Jamovi into R, you can go from R into Jamovi. And for that, you need the RJ editor. And that's one of the modules that you can um, upload and install. So the RJ editor, basically, um, what I can do is just um, remove that analysis. What the RJ editor does, it allows you to run R code in Jamovi. So, Let me just go through this. Um, and there are different reasons why you want to do that. Um, so uh, the, the analysis available in R package might not be available in Jamovi. So if you prefer to use Jamovi, you can run uh, R analyses in Jamovi. Um, it's also, the RJ editor is really good for people who want to learn how to use R, but they're a bit intimidated from the, the R Studio workspace. And of course, it allows for collaboration with less advanced R users in your team. So let me just give you an example of how you do that. So say if you're somebody who's working on, uh, this is a different data set, this is a cholesterol data set, and you've just done a t-test. But you may have somebody who doesn't prefer to use R, they prefer to use Jamovi, uh, and it's a bit intimidating for them to do that. So what you would do is you would install the JMV Connect, 
and you would have a uh, Jamovi data set already running. So uh, if I open the uh, cholesterol data set, like this. So let me just check I have it installed. Yes, OK. So the JMV, uh, sorry, the, uh, the JMV Connect, what it will do is, uh, what it can do is um, identify different data files that are available to you in your folder. And we've got tooth growth and cholesterol. Well, I want to use cholesterol. So you click read. So you read in the data. Uh, you create the data set uh, uh, data as well. So you can see it's, it's uploaded there. You can do a summary of the data just to check that it's all there and present and correct. And let's say you want to run a t-test and you also do want to do a very basic visualization. And for that, I'm just going to use a ggplot, but that's, this is just an additional step that you don't need to worry about. I'm just, I'm just showing you the, the functionality of the, of uh, the JMB Connect. So it's anything that you can do in R, you can do in JMB. So what you would do uh, for somebody who prefers to work in the um, in Jamovi is you would go onto the RJ editor and you can copy and paste this in here and you run uh, the command shift and enter. And so as you can see here, you've just duplicated exactly what you've done in R in Jamovi. So just to quickly go back, I've with the JMB package, you can go from um, Jamovi into R. With the Jamovi Connect, you can go from R into Jamovi. And there are different reasons why you would just use the RJ editor to run all of your analyses. It's very, very stripped down, basic. You don't need to worry about all of the other panels and stuff like this. It's very less intimidating to somebody that's new to code and new to R. So it's a nice way to teach people just the basics without all, all this noise from this additional stuff. And of course, it's really good for collaborating as well. So for teaching and collaboration, I think these two packages are really quite useful. Um, so we have about 30 minutes left. What I want to quickly show you is this flex plot thing, and then I can uh, take questions. So one great thing about the flex plot module is that um, it kind of gets rid of all of the obstacles that come into force when you try to create graphics, uh, either in SPSS or R. And what it does is it, it, it um, just by giving it a particular out, uh, put, uh, outcome, it can um, decide what's the best way to visualize your data. And so you can get onto the more difficult stuff of interpreting your, your graphs rather than um, sort of being bogged down with how to uh, sort of visualize your data in a clear way. So just to demonstrate this, um, I'll just quickly go back to the, uh, the tooth growth data set. So I open the flex plot and the outcome variable is length and it automatically generates, let me just take it off the syntax. It automatically generates um, the uh, uh, density part. But say if you want to look at uh, the length with reference to the, the supplement, and it generates the graph straight away, and maybe you want to look at the dose as well. Now, this is quite a complicated graph. You're looking at different interactions, uh, so the dose, uh, is the different colors to separate them. It's still quite a fairly pretty graph, uh, but maybe you just want to see them separate. So maybe you want to separate each uh, by the dose. So what you can go do is the panel view variable or panel view, and it will separate them according to the different dose here. Now there are, are different fe features of the flex plot that are worth noting. One which is really useful 
is the ghost line. So this ghost line is a uh, ghost line of the data from your reference. And in this case, it's the 500 um, uh, dose group. So you can quickly compare and scan across the different panels that separate in a clear way uh, and just check them against the lower dose group. You can um, do a bunch of other things uh, as well. Uh, so let's say you want to work with um, a different data set. So let's try maybe could this be done. Let's try the um, age and height data sets that we were looking at earlier. So maybe we want to look at the correlation between, say, um, age, uh, so height and length. Um, this is actually a good opportunity to just quickly show you a different function of Jamova, which is sometimes as a default, it will set your um, variables to uh, nominal, but you can change that by just double clicking on the top there. So we can make age continuous, and we can make height continuous, and we can keep gender as um, that. But to help us uh, know what these different labels mean, we can just change them to boys and girls. Like that. So let's go back to the flex plot. So the outcome is the height, and we can do this. So here we've got a nice correlation, a uh, scatter plot between height and age. And if we want to fit a, sorry, a regression line, do that. And we can make it so that uh, it's just the mean and standard deviation as well. We can also change how prominent the data points are. So we can make them really clear, or we can make them more faded. Like that, so you can see them more grayscale. We can do a panel view like we did before. So here the boys is the reference and we can compare it against the girls and they're in a separate, nice and clear fashion. We can remove the ghost line if we want. Put it back in. And we can remove the confidence bands as well. Or we can put them back in. So hopefully you can see that the FlexBot is quite a nice, easy way to visualize your data and to interpret it quickly. And of course, you can copy uh, and paste the, um, I think you can do this, later. yeah. So it's already there, ready for you to put in your paper or whatever. Okay, so hopefully, I, I that was probably a bit clunky going through the Jamovi, but hopefully I can uh, iron out any, um, uh, questions or anything that's unclear in the um, questions. So we have a few questions already. Um, so, okay, so Elizabeth, these are all the questions that were asked, right? Um, so how can another researcher reproduce the analyses in R and SPSS? We have script or syntax, but here it seems like a clipping system. Um, So hopefully the, my talk on the Jamovi will um, settle that. So if it, you're talking of R, you can flip between the two using the syntax mode and uh, with the JMV package and the Jamovi JMV connect package. Um, ah, yes, there is a filter and subgrouping setting for Jamovi. Um, there is, um, so let me just click on to, let me just share my screen again. Um, um, so you can see here filter, and if you say, uh, I think it's something like row, um, uh, let me just, let me just do the check to save. Uh, 
yeah, so of course, just Google it. Um, yeah, so this is a case where you can uh, select to remove um, one. So if you're doing a say, sensitivity analysis and you want to remove a participant because they might be an outlier and just see if it affects the data, the, the, the result. Participants, you can you can filter out entire groups, so you can just look at one group. It sounds simply that. Uh, this is that question. Um, uh, do you have an option to create error bars in JASP? So we can try it out. Um, Maybe there must be a way to do. I think it might not be JASP. The better one would be in Jamovi. Uh, I'm just answering this question here. The the JASP. Do we have an option to create error bars by JASP? I think the better option would be Jamovi to create uh, error bars. Um, and you can either do that using ggplot or uh, let me just try and find the genetic. Um, uh, so have a look quickly if there's a way to visualize the data in Jimo. Whoops. Um, Okay, what I will do is I'm going to find out if you can do that, if you can add error bars. I'm sure you can, but at the minute, um, I can't put my finger on it. I have seen it done, I think. So what I will do is, after this talk is over, so I can answer all the questions, I'll have a look and then I'll get back to you on that. Um, okay. Um, where are we? Why have I got that open? Go away. Um, Jamovi, if you want to do a loop, is it possible to do so in Jamovi or do you need to alter the source code? No, you should be able to. So that's the reason why the Jamovi Connect, uh, it allows you to do loops. Uh, it's in the R um, in the presentation. Uh, let me just find the, the blog. Mm. Yeah, so you can make use of the loops and if statements um, as well using the RJ editor. So you should be able to do that, no problem. Um, yeah, uh, so Sheila, you missed the first 30 minutes, that's fine. The, the talk is being recorded. And you can always just email me or just message me if you have any questions. Uh, oh, yeah, Lorenzo has already asked that. Uh, can you manually change the title uh, or axis? You should be able to. Uh, I mean, the title, the, the axes um, are based on the uh, what you've given here. So if you um, I don't know, let's just do. What? So if you go back to the data,
So you can see here. Oh, wow. um, so you can see here that I've just by changing the the variable here, um, you can change the axis what it appears here. In terms of the title. Um, I'm not sure. I guess you can just have to do that in the Word document. That would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, alternatively, if you want to, you can just use the RJ editor and make your plot using ggplot or something like that in your R, um, uh, your, your R studio. Um, um, just to make sure there is no way to have a syntax for R code in Jasp. Yeah, so just to be clear on this, um, the, the, you can't sort of lift, you can't open up the R code. So you can't, uh, with, with Jamova, you can look at the underlying R code. Whereas with Jasp, I don't think you can. Um, I remember Alexander X tried to do this once, but I don't think he could do it. And I think that's why Jamovi was, was developed to um, get around that obstacle. So I don't think you can, you can do, do that. Um, multiple imputation, I don't know. Uh, I can put that on my list of things to follow up on and see if you can do multiple imputation. Um, that's something that I think would a lot of people would find useful. So I can have a look at that um, for you uh, and see. Okay. All right. Okay. So All right. thanks a lot yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah for this wonderful lecture. Okay, I think it was great. Useful. I think it was very inspiring for a lot of us. And I think many okay. supervisors uh, can now start using it for their students. So that would also be a very great application for this. Thank you a lot. And also everyone who joined the meeting today. Thanks yes, a lot. Thank and you. let's unmute for a second and uh, give him a big applause. Oh. Uh, well, uh, I'll upload the data and files and everything to the OSF so you can play around with it. But um, please do feel free to, to contact me. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, do feel free to contact me if you have any questions and I can hopefully find out and report back um, as well. If, um, if you want to, uh, the, um, on Thursday we have a talk from Daniel Starr, Professor Daniel Starr. He's a statistician at, at King's and he will talk about um, model fitting and the problems and uh, that you come up with, with uh, when you try to fit your model data. So I will, um, you're more than welcome to join that and a link will be circulated. Okay, all right then, well thank you uh, very much everyone and enjoy your week. Okay. So Elizabeth, I'm going to...